Hey everyone, Pot Air Sam. Welcome to part three of our Ravel Premium. <laughs> That's laughable. 124 BMW 850i. Now, if you've been following this build at all via the daily live streams, you'll have seen the calamity I've had with this. I said all along this thing was going together way too easy compared to some of the horror stories I've heard about it, and we hear about it today. So a couple of calamities, which we'll talk about in a minute, but it was put back in the box, basically, to never be finished again. And after finishing the skyline, which we've just done, I had a bit of time spare, and I thought, you know what? <clears throat> I'm not going to let it beat me. It's a kit I've always wanted to build. It's a car I love, and I paid a lot of money for it. I paid £80 for this thing, and it's not worth it at all. Um, we've got to finish it. So here it is, and we are going to get it finished today. So I'll elaborate more on the problems as we get into the build, but first of all, watch this. Hey everyone, please subscribe to the channel, click the bell notifications, get notified of our latest videos, give the video a thumbs up or a thumbs down, and leave a comment. I do read and appreciate every comment you guys and girls leave behind. I may not reply to them all, but they are all appreciated. And there's a link in the description of the video that takes you to a big long list of all handy videos and a lot of the products I use in my videos. You now have the chance to support the video content creation by using Patreon or the PayPal me link in the description down below. All the videos always remain free to watch. This is just your chance to help support the videos. Okay, so welcome back to the build that should not be. So we have a few calamities with this thing and I'll explain them as we go. So number one, this thing ended up back in the box. After one reason or another, it ended up back in the box, destined to never be finished. But stubbornness on my part meant it was coming back out to be finished. So we've got all the interior to put together here and all the finishing touches. Lots of parts to clean up and paint. Now sadly, with it going back in the box, I put all the SD cards away. I've accidentally deleted over the footage of me painting the interior. So sadly that is lost. Um, but we've got a few parts of it being sanded and assembled. And then afterwards of it being masked and unmasked and that. So we are missing a little bit, but the good thing about that is we can get it all in one part. There's the interior that's been painted, tan, and then my girlfriend Hannah has flocked it for us. We've masked off and painted some tan areas on the interior as well. I basically looked online at BMW A50 interiors and looked how they were done and what I liked. So black and uh, like a light beige tan colour looked good with a beige carpet. And just assembling it as we go. Now this interior is nasty. I said all along this kit was going together too easy, and this is where it really set, let itself down. So the running gear we did last time literally fell apart on us while we were trying to mount the wheels. Even the kit wheels, it just fell to bits. Not very secure mounting points. Uh, it basically crumbled in my hand. Um, then trying to figure out how we're going to mount the aftermarket wheels. Everything just collapsed. Gave up, and I put it back in the box, never to be finished. So... Um, well, look, it's back. It's like a phoenix from the flames, but here it is. And we've got some real bodgery to do later on to try and get this thing finished. And it got to the point of thinking, you know what? Let's just get it done. Let's do as good a job as we possibly can. And if we get it finished, it's a Brucey bonus. And if not, it goes back in the box and never lives to see another day. So, we're hand painting our seatbelt here. We're going to hand paint it below model color black. Let it dry, wipe off any excess with a cocktail stick cotton bud against water-based paint over lacquer, so it is quite easy to remove. Um, and to repeat that on all the belts. Like I say, a little bit of water on a very sharp, pointy cotton bud. And we can wipe off any excess water-based paint. This is the beauty of water-based paint over lacquers. You can do this. And if you need to, just get a new one and rinse, repeat, and carry on. So, like I say, this interior is nasty. Very, very nasty. The rest of the kit have gone together really well so far. This interior is not great. doesn't fit together very well. Um, it's basically crap in places. It's the only way I can put it. Um, and this kit's lucky it ever got finished. Like I say, you're going to see some bodgery of the finest order in a little bit. You really will. But it was a problem-solving morning on a live stream, and it worked well. It actually did work quite well. So we're gluing all interior together. We've got our precision tips. I did say tips on our super glue. Uh, we're just gluing together our seats, popping the headrests on, 
and just assembling it as good an order as we possibly can. Like I say, we're going to make the best of a bad situation. And this has certainly become a bit of a pig. I knew it was a bad kit. Lots of people have told me. But yeah, like I say, it got really well so far. And just at the final hurdle, the interior and the running gear really let it down. So gluing our seat in place. This uh, thicker super glue from Amazon is working very well at the minute. Really impressed by this. You can find links to that and the precision super glue tips in my Amazon store linked in the description down below. Uh, we're just going around and gluing all the interior together as per the instructions. And like I said, the fit's not great, so we're just getting together as good as we can. And in the end, it didn't look too bad on the model at all. Uh, some decals to put on. We've got the instrument cluster to put in place. We've got the center console with the heat events. And there's a few other decals here and there to place as well, including the BMW logo on the steering wheel. Uh, it's just a case, get them in place, usual decal solutions um, and method. Get it in place, get the excess fluid out from behind it. Hit it with your decal solutions of choice, which for me are UMP strong on this. I'm just removing a little bit of extra carrier film there to get it to fit in place. And then line it up in place and get it in. So these are called premium kits. It's a little bit laughable, but it is a 32-year-old kit, so I suppose that's kind of got to be remembered. Uh, going into this, you've got to think, it's an old kit. It's not the best. Um, and just make the best of it you can. And like I say, I'm a huge BMW fan, especially these E31 8 Series. Um, so that's what drove me to do it. Now, like I say, the suspension all fell to bits. Lost footage again. Don't know where it went. Um, literally all the brake discs... I say discs in the looser sense of the matter. They weren't very good. Fell apart. The suspension arm broke. It just all basically fell to bits in my hand. Very uh, brittle. Maybe because it's all plastic. And it was just crap. It's the only way to do it. So my idea was to drill into the transmission, the differential at the back. And put a piece of plastic through. Sleeve that with another piece of plastic. And then use the wheel stubs that come with the Alpina rims from Scale Production to somehow bodge together a makeshift axle. And I did it quite well. So I've got some tube in here from Plastruct. And I'm just getting a piece that's a little bit bigger than the wheel stubs. And then getting a 2.2 mil drill bit and drilling into it with my pin vise to widen this. And then we get a piece of styrene rod that will slot over the side. And then just checking it fits, we slide the tube over the rod and slide that through the differential. And then the wheel, fit in the end like so and then what i can do is drill right through each side so it's symmetrical and then we pop through the rod in one length all the way through and it took a bit of fettling a bit of cutting and measuring to get it right but this is roughly how we did it cut it roughly to size doesn't have to be exact and then get our plastic tube that we had earlier widen it up with the drill bit that way it slides over that um, tubing and the tamiya size wheel studs uh, which you can change on the scale production rims you can have different fitments on there it'll take revel fujimi and tamiya as you can see i'm just popping this in place it will friction fit to begin with so we just popped it in place that fits inside that tubing just nice with a little bit of play and then that fits over the rod we put through. Then we can muck around, cut them to shape till we get the right width of track on the car. Um, but it is bodgery of the highest order. I'm just having a look, make sure everything sits right. And then we can say CA glue all this later. And once you put a bit of weight on the car, it actually sat all right. On the front, I measured up uh, either side of the engine where to drill. Put a hole through, used a similar method with a piece of rod, the tube, um, and glued it in place. As you can see, I put a hole in. There's our rod with a bit of tubing over the top. That's placed in, and then we placed a wheel in to get it to sit where we want. Now, I didn't want this thing sitting mega low. They don't sit mega low at the factory, so I didn't want to do that. Uh, holding the wheel we want it, I put a little bit of glue around the edge, so like a, a super glue weld. It's not going to look pretty, but we won't see this anyway. I think we're past the point of care and what it looks like underneath now anyway. 
a little bit of kicker once we've got it in place. And there we go, with the wheels in place, quick test fit, and it sat really well. Spin it around, try the other wheels. It didn't look bad at all. We did have a little bit of suspension free play, so it did actually move around. We've just taped the front bumper on to check the fitment to that too. And that is very, very good. So happy with that, we're good. Now, obviously we lost our brake discs as well. So I've got some spare Tammy ones and I'm drilling these out to fit over our tubing. So that they're just a snuggish fit over the top. And uh, happy with that, we can paint those up and then we're gonna glue our Tamiya fitment stubs in place. Make sure we get these as straight as possible. Like so. And then clean up the resin, bit of UMP brush cleaner on our Mickey Mouse toothbrush. Give it a good scrub. Important to do on resin, there are mold release agents on a lot of these resin pieces. Depends if it's 3D printed or uh, poured. I think this is 3D printed on this, but still worthwhile doing to get any uh, chemicals off there. Wipe over a bit of tissue, bit of a pointy cotton bud, and gently in between the spokes. And there's all our parts ready for some primer. So we've got various bits for the headlights, which need painting in body color. These have been forgotten about, so we'll do these near the end. We've got interior parts, the same color as the interior of the boot that needs to. I'm going to move through these quite quick. There's no point hanging around on these. We're going to paint our windscreen washer bottles white as well, just with some TS26. And then with our wheels, we're going to use GX2 gloss black and get a nice gloss black base down. Use probably three, four coats of this stuff, leading up to a wettish coat at the end to get a nice gloss black finish. Like so. Don't go mad. Just keep building it up slowly and get all the angles and recesses. Uh, Mr. Service of Black on our brake disc for now as well. And our under tray for our bonnet. This is going to stay in Mr. Surfacer. As well these parts as well. These are all under the engine bay. And then all the other parts that were primed in grey um, will be painted in Tamiya LP5. So we've got number plates, um, the bonnet grille, um, window wipers, things like that. We're going to spray in semi-gloss black. So there's a couple of light coats through the 0.35 apex. Good to go. And our lights, we need to mask off and paint the amber or orange for the turn signals indicators. So two or three light coats, just building up nice and slow. It's been thinned a little bit with Tammy Lacquer Thinner with Retarder. And just coming back, probably get about three, four light coats on there. Building it up nice and slow till we get the colour we desire. We can cut that to one side to dry because it's going to need remasking. And then we've got some. Mr. Hobby Super Metallic Super Fine Silver, thinned 50% with Mr. Hobby Rapid Thinner. Through the 0.2 mil Apex, 16 PSI-ish, we're going to put several light coats down. This looks like a lot going down. There's hardly any paint coming out of that airbrush. I'm just very lightly misting it on by getting all the angles. And then put it to one side to dry and put a couple more coats down afterwards. And it's a beautiful colour. Um, I've used a few sets of these rims before and they've got better quality I think as they've gone. I'm pretty sure these ones now are 3D printed because they actually have information printed around the side of them. Which I'm pretty sure my other ones didn't because they were poured resin. Um, and then on the brake disc we've got some Mr. Obby Super Metallic Super Iron I'm using now. Again thinned with a rapid thinner and through the same airbrush. But the wheels dry next day and the tyres on. We now uh, put our Alpina logos in the middle. So get them in place, hit them with some UMP normal decal solution. If they do move, just pop them back in place quick. And then our calipers, we're just going to paint in a light gold. I believe this was Tamiya LP71. I think it was off the top of my head. Just going to paint them gold. Don't want anything too harsh a contrast. We're not saying that we're going to do red or anything. So. Keep it pretty uh, low key. And the number plate decals in place. Tricky. 32 roll decals. It actually went on pretty well to be fair. 
responding quite well to the uh, normal and strong UMP decal solutions. Let's get them in place and leave them be. Get a big typical Revel sheet of number plates for these. Uh, the window wipers have been painted LB5 and I'm just using my Sharpie to pan paint on the blade just for a little bit of tonal difference. Windscreen washer bottles, we've got the caps being hand painted in the low model color black. Some careful painting and any excess paint can be removed with a pointed cotton bud. And then we've unmasked and remasked the red side of the tail uh, lights now to spray them in clear red from Tamiya LP. Again, build it up slowly, multiple coats and you're good to go. Everything's dry now. We've got some uh, Tamiya panel line wash, thinned with a little bit of uh, Santador odorless mineral spirit. And we're going to give our brake discs, calipers and wheels a quick wash. Just add a little bit of depth to them. So it's a case of putting it on into all the recesses, letting it dry and then we're removing the excess with a soft cotton bud about half an hour later with some Santador from Windsor Newton on there, which is uh, odorless mineral spirits. And that way, it just adds a little bit of depth and a bit of interest to the bits. And then a the body. So we've got a few dust spots in this, not a lot, but enough to warrant sanding. And I see a lot of people say that they get that good a clear coat that they don't need to sand. Trust me, it's always worth sanding, especially on 2K. This is a good 2K job, this one. This one turned out really nice out the uh, airbrush, but flattening it back and polishing it makes it look a lot better. Trust me, you'll lose the thickness of 2K, which is quite easy to get. A lot of people complain of the toy light look of 2K. You'll lose a bit of the thickness. You'll get rid of those dust spots. As long as you sand in straight lines, don't go round and round. So you can see I've gone crisscross pattern there. You won't get excess scratches in it. I'm using 8,000 micro mesh here. I don't like going any lower than this if I can help it. And we're just going around and lightly sanding all the paint. It's a good hour or so's work. You can spend a lot longer if you want. And you seem to be very aware of any raised areas like uh, the edges, wheel arches, door handles. They don't go too heavy. I'm applying no real pressure here at all. We're keeping it wet with nice clean water and just constantly going over it with very, very fine pressure. After you use the 8,000 grit, I've moved to 12,000. And we're going to get rid of a lot of those maybe micro scratches we've got. And try and get back the best finish we can. Now we'll see you've got the boot, the bonnet, the wing mirrors, the doors, sorry, the doors, the body um, to do all separate parts. So don't forget about doing them all. And just be aware of your edges. It's very easy to burn through edges, especially on bonnets. It's unbelievably easy to do. Once you're happy, you can keep repeating the sanding until you're happy. You can come into the polishing now. So we've got our ultimate polish system here. This is starting off with the compound with a nice soft cotton cloth. Uh, we're just going to go to town and give this a good polish up. Now, how far you go is completely up to you. For me, it was a good clear coat. I had a few dust spots. I pushed it as far as I was happy to go. There's a few blemishes still in the paint. You can see them there just catching the light. Um, if you're not, you can always repeat the sanding again and then repeat the compounding and the polishing. But for me, sometimes it, it's better to quit while you're ahead kind of and not push it too far and ruin your hard work um none of my paint jobs are perfect i'm the first to admit it uh, but you can definitely see the difference just the flatting and compound that makes uh, alone once the compound's done you've removed all that get some nice clean cloths and we move on to our polish so the polish is a less abrasive compound um this will get a lot more of the shine back so it's a lot thinner a lot less coarse, um, but you still need to be aware of your edges. Just take your time. Obviously, with every step of sanding and polishing, you are removing a layer of paint. So there's only so far you can go before you'll burn through and ruin your hard work. So yeah, but less is more. Don't go mad and just keep checking and stay away from those edges. You, you are going to have to polish and sand the edges, but just don't go mad on them because you'll burn through in a heartbeat. Trust me, been there and done it many times before. And once you're happy with that, get another clean cloth. And look at that shine. Absolutely beautiful. Really is a pretty one, this one. It's a great colour. I got a good 2K out the airbrush. And other than a few little remnants of dust specks, which you can just see when the light catches it, I'm more than happy. 
Once you polish the whole thing up and all the polish is dried, you can get rid of as much as you can with an old toothbrush. But for me, I had to put some water in the airbrush. And for God's sake, make sure it's water. You don't pick up lacquer thinner. And use your airbrush to jet wash out all those panel lines. It's a good trick. It works really well. It is going to get water everywhere. So make sure you've got some clean tissue down to catch it. And it works really well at getting anything out of panel lines. But it might be struggle to remove with a toothbrush or a cocktail stick and what have you. It does make life a lot easier. Once you've done that, you can then jet wash it off with air, air dry kind of, to get rid of all the water, and then give it a final dry with a soft cloth. And you're good to go. There we go. And like I say, if you need to repeat everything, just go back over it again. Now the glass. This comes with the rear windows in place for the side. Um, the BMW 8 Series is a pillarless B-pillar car. So once the windows are down in the front and back, it's a completely open um, center section of the car. So what I want to do is remove that. So I've just scored through gently with a knife a good few times, just following the same line. And once you get near the end, you can just snap it off. And there you go, and repeat that for the other side. And as you'll see, with a quick test fit, it fits in perfect, and it looks so much better without the side glass in. And all of those tedious jobs, window rubber masking. So using Tamiya's 1, 2, 3, 6, 10, and 18, I believe it is, mill tapes, we're going to mask all of it off. So it's such a case of following the window rubbers. You should be able to see them on the car. Uh, we've got the roof rail gutters on these as well. I'm just going to go around and mask them off. It's a very tedious job, um, but it's one of those jobs worth doing. On the blue sky, sorry, the purple sky we just did, you couldn't really see them. On this, you can. And there's the finished masking at the top left. And on the windows as well, we need to mask these off by hand. Uh, the, the BMW does have a nice black trim around the windows, so I've gone away from the edge a little bit. Doesn't really tell you to do this instructions, but if you look at pictures of the real car, you'll see it. We've got some Tamiya LP5 thinned again, about 60% with Tamiya Lacquer Thin with Retarder. 0.35 mil apex airbrush we're going to put down several light coats on this building it up slowly until we get enough uh, coverage on the plastic we're keeping it angled so we get no overspray on the outside which is easier said than done but if you can do that it saves a lot of clean up later on as you can see on the body shell we've masked off the major areas with some cling film to save on tape uh, and that way we don't get any overspray and at the end of the last coat you can see there the paint going down nicely on the windows just keep going until you can't see through the plastic anymore and that should do you just fine lp5 is a good color obviously being lacquer as you can see it covers really well dries really quick and uh, minimal fuss i am loving my lacquer paint at the minute as i said i'm probably 99 percent lacquer paint now for everything and uh yeah loving them absolutely loving them and then on the window rubbers, again, just nice light coats. We don't need any heavy applications of paint here. Should really have my lid on the color cup, but I haven't. I'm very naughty. I just need to go around, light coats, getting all those angles from above, below, kind of inside as well. You need to make sure you've done an A1 job of masking here so you don't run all your hard work. And again, a couple of coats with a few minutes in between drying. Should see that done, no problem at all. With the windows all amassed, everything's turned out well on those. Uh, we've got a few detailed parts to do on the front bumpers and the rear lights as well. So we're just painting up this grille at the front, which is black on the real car. Muller colour black, proving really well. And we're going to try and tidy up our bodged axles uh, underneath by painting them black as well. And to be fair, once they were painted black, they didn't look too bad. We still had our suspension struts in the back, so they looked all right. We didn't have them in the front. And I wasn't that worried about not seeing them, so I just left them out. Um, the front and rear lights were painted in Vallejo uh, silver to replicate our reflectors. In hindsight, I should have used bare metal foil. Why I didn't, I honestly do not know. I normally do. But for some reason, I think I was just on autopilot like, trying to get this thing done. Because I've still got no idea how it's all going to go together. I've still got the interior to fit in and the boot. So I've got no idea how this is all going to fit. So just kind of getting to that point and uh, getting there as quick as I can. All the clear parts for the light lenses, we're going to go around with a Sharpie in black. 
and uh, that will simulate the rubber and just add depth to them makes them look a bit more realistic so when you put it on the car it actually looks like the real thing it does make a big difference and it's a step that's well worth doing like say just a sharpie or an editing marker and carefully go around all the outside of the lenses and it adds a good look to the plastic so like i say it's step well worth doing onto our headlights now we've got a chrome uh reflectors put in this is the kick chrome i opted to leave it because it's behind the clear part so it's not really seeable and it looks all right to be fair and to be honest i more than likely won't display these in the open position anyway just because of the poor fit of them under the bonnet um, so glued in place with some stay glue we've got our bob smith's odorless stuff here uh, to glue the clear parts in place just make sure everything's lined up there are locator points on all the parts so they're pretty simple and easy to line up and then repeat for the other side as well and on the rear lights we're just going to apply a little bit of the bob smith's glue at the bottom where the red is because you won't see it then you would see it through the yellow and just gently apply and position you get a couple of seconds to position it with the ca glue it is quite forgiving and repeat that for the other side that's a job done there and then on the rear lights itself exactly the same a little dab of glue or a yabba dabba do as we've been saying lately at the bottom you can apply the corner clusters in as well make sure they're all lined up where they need to sit so at this point start looking out for excess glue repeat that for the other side and we can test our boot trunk lid See how it fits, which is pretty good. The BMW kidney grill at the front, we're just going to put a little bit of Bob Smith's glue underneath. We've already test fitted to make sure it goes in place. And then pop the glue in, pop the chrome piece over. Now, where we cut it off, there are missing visible parts, but luckily this fits through from behind. It does go only go one way, so you may have to test fit it. I had to turn it around a couple of times to get it to fit were well required once you've got it push it in it does push fully home and then with a little bit of the thicker ca glue we put a couple of dabs each side hit it with kicker and that's our held in place as well so the kit's good in some areas terrible in others it's a bit of a strange one this uh, like i said from the beginning i believe these are plastic kits of the maisto metal kits which i know where there is one and i might buy it just for curiosity it's in the exact same color to a degree it's in the burgundy red and i'm interested to see what it's like compared to the actual plastic kit so it's something i might actually pick up it's fairly cheap and i'd be interested to see what it is because i believe revel bought maisto and then turned all those die cast kits into plastic and that's what these are so i'd like to see if there's any uh, hint of truth in that it would be interesting to see Front indicators again glued in place where the yellow is. And then our front number plate in place. You can just see on the front where we haven't quite painted enough black next to those front indicators. So we need to go over that later on, which we will do. I actually forget till after we've taken pictures. And an eagle eye viewer noticed in my pictures, I also managed to put my exhaust on upside down in part two. So that's something that needs rectifying as well. <clears throat> so Yes, just shows you everyone makes mistakes, it's easy to do. We've got our boot interior trim now as well, which was painted the same colour as our leather on the inside, and then our under tray, um, under shield, soundproofing for the bonnet as well. A couple of dabs of glue, yabba dabba do. And then all the parts that are excess under the engine bed. There's quite a few. Make sure you refer to the instructions to get them all in the correct position. Some of them actually friction fit in really well. And at this point, be aware of glue on your fingers. It can ruin your hard work. And the bonnet hinges. I did put them in place. They did fit. The boot wouldn't shut with them on, so they came back off. <laughs> so, yes, not great. Uh, and then the windscreen in place with the UV glue. Just apply it in some inconspicuous areas and then hit it with the light. And it glues itself in place really well. Love these UV pens. Put the clear part in. So much less fuss-free. 
and risky is using CA glue and you can easily remove it should you wish and there our interior tub just needs gently fettling into place and not a bad fit this actually and looks quite good quite impressive interior consider how bad it was the lovely uh, leather seats look good the flocking looks good on the parcel shelf and our boot, which is also flocked as well, you won't really see it because I don't show it open, um, is also flocked and this is UV glued in place as well. And then getting our chassis on, this is where I was like, oh my God, is all this gonna fit together? Because it's the first time it's all gone together. So it needs a bit of gentle coaxing into place with some careful stretching of the body panels. Always a nerve wracking point this. So getting the top in and the sides and then the very front just need to spread it a little bit like so. And there we go, in place. It actually fits in quite well, not too bad at all. Quite a release to get it in place. Just making sure everything lines up, which it does. Happy with that interior colour, happy with the leather colour, looks really good. And now our makeshift discs. Now these turned out really well. Beautiful paint color from Mr. Hobby, um, and all test fitted and pre-drilled. They fitted really well where I wanted them. So a little bit of glue on these axles we made, and a little bit of glue behind. Hit it with some kicker, held in place. Perfect, just get them all lined up where you want them. So there's the uh, front one done. Make sure you get your calipers orientated the right way. So just a quick check with the wheel to make sure everything fits, and it still does, which is good. There we go. And then the front one, sorry, the rear one. A little bit of glue in place. <coughs> Excuse me. Slide it over, just fit it flush to the edge, get the caliper positioned where you want it. Let the glue get a hold of it. And then our front bumper. We've repeated the other side and done the calipers over to the side as well. And the front bumper in place as well. Just li line it in place. Making sure it all lines up, fits really well this. And then I'm picking strategic points inside where it can't be seen. Let's apply a little dab of glue, a yabba dabba do. Make sure everything's straight. And then hit with a bit of kicker and repeat on the other side. So I do one side at a time. And that way you know you get everything glued where you want it. A couple of dabs of kicker, we'll get it in place. And then the other side, just get it where you want it, push it in place. And then again, the glue in a nice inconspicuous area. This won't be seen in here at all. Micro brush with a bit of kicker on there again and just touch it. A bit more, touch it, job done. And then we've got some interior parts still to put in. Like I say, I don't tend to show this with the bonnet up. So get a good look at the engine now because you're not going to see it anymore after this. Just because the bonnet's such a tight fit, it's a little bit of a pain. So we've got some trim panels to put in, the window wipers that are going in place. These needed the holes widened a little bit as well. You can see our boot with our beautiful carpet, which is looking good. Again, you're not going to see it just because the kit is poor and the body panels. They do come off, but they're a pig to get back on. And then we've got lots of ancillary parts underneath the engine bay. Not going to pretend to know what they all are. I've no idea what that is. This is our washer fluid bottles. We've got some power steering bottles going in place. I'm assuming it's a brake fluid reservoir and a few other things in there as well. Obviously, no battery on these because I believe the battery's in the boot on these. And then the bonnet. Kind of got to fettle this in and around. I had to trim a little bit off the top of the window wiper on the left hand side as well to get that to fit. But to kind of place, get it in place, and you've got to give the little headlights a bit of a wiggle, like so, to get the front end in. I'm glad we spent all the time at the beginning getting all this to fit because the fit isn't too bad, but there's no way you're taking this on and off all the time to show people the interior. And then our wing mirrors. So these have been polished up separately as well. You can use the kit chrome reflectors. There's a little bit of Bob Smith's in there and drop them in place. Not the best chrome, but certainly adequate for what we need. Let those dry, and then very carefully, a little dab of Bob Smith's. And very careful application. There we go. That's in place. 
door handles, the tiniest smidgen of say glue on the back. If you're not sure about using say glue, use PVA glue. I normally do, but I was quite confident on this. And then the wheels, more bodgery. So we're going to fill our axles and all around the hub of the brake caliper, uh, this, sorry, with CA glue, pop the wheel in, get it lined up so it's nice and straight, both on, on all axes, make sure we get the right way, and then repeat for the back. Again, all the dry fitting we did and testing paid off because everything fitted in quite well. Making sure we get the tires the right way around. <coughs> Get it in, get it straight, and then repeat the other side, and then our badges. So Phil Hartford very kindly sent me a load of BMW badges. So we get the new propeller logos and the A50 logo for the boot. We painted this at the beginning, if you remember, uh, but we've got a nice metallic badge to go over it now instead. So it's a case of peel it off the back of paper, put it in place. It's got a plastic trim over the top of it. Give that a good rub over with a cotton bud. Make sure it's all straight and you're happy with it. You see the BMW Propel logo on the boots as well. Beautiful metallic decals and badges from Hobby Design. Once you're happy that the badge is secured down, you can peel off the backing paper and that's on and in place. The BMW logos themselves are actually decals, so you put those in water like normal, set them in place. I don't use any setting solutions, I just let them stick. And there we go, a nice BMW A50 badge. And then the final step, we've got some UMP Shine. This is our spray wax. And um, we're gonna go around and give everything a gentle wax polish. Uh, what a beautiful finish, beautiful color, really nice dark burgundy Calypso red from the BMW and gravity colors, absolutely beautiful. We've got over the glass as well. I'm just gonna give this a nice clean up. As you see, I've got a glove on one hand now to save any more fingerprints, but it's a beautiful color this. It looks so great under the camera lights, it really does. The pictures don't do it justice, really. It looks so much better under an actual camera and in real life. But uh, what a beautiful car. Nice interior color. Glad I chose that color. The flocking looks great. The Alpina rims are a classic wheel. They look stunning on this thing. Um, very happy how it's turned out. Really am. Um, let that uh, dry off, haze off, and then get a clean cloth again and just buff it all off. And look at that beautiful shine now. Always wear flatting and polishing clear coats. Whether it's perfect or not, you look at my roof and the bonnet. I've got a couple of floors still in there, but I'm not pushing it and ruining my hard work. And there we go, it's done. It's not perfect. Some of the panels don't fit great. The bonnet isn't the best fit in places. The ride height, I'm pretty happy with that. Probably could do with being a smidgen lower, but I'm quite happy with how it looks. The wheels look great. I love the classic Alpina wheels. Our makeshift disc and calipers behind look great as well. They're quite big for the car, but they look good. Interior color, love it, absolutely love that. Glad to remove that rear quarter glass as well, because that looks much better without those in place. Um, and yeah, it came out well, considering it was back in the box, ready to destined to be never finished. Uh, I'm happy. Like I say, the exhaust are upside down, somebody pointed that out. That's been rectified now. Um, just, I just literally snapped them off. They were say glued in place, if I remember right, and say glued back on. Job done. Like I say, it's not a great kit at all. For the £80 this thing cost me, it is not a great kit. And I am shocked to say that Tamiya rebox this under their own name. So, God up anyone who's got the Tamiya kit, expecting Tamiya quality, because you are not going to get that. But overall, I'm happy how this turned out. It's one of my favorite BMWs, one of my favorite all-time cars. Favorite color of this car as well. And I'm glad we persevered and actually got it finished. And it didn't turn out too bad. It's not perfect, but hey, it is what it is. We did some fine bodger on the suspension to get it all to fit and sit relatively well. I'm quite happy with that. And overall, yeah, it looks good. I'm happy with it and I'm glad it's done. Right then, there we go. So it's done. Am I happy with it? Yes. Is it a great kit? No, it's terrible. Um, it's lucky it got finished. It really is. I have completely lost all interest in building this thing. After all the hard work of part two fell apart, literally in front of everyone on a live stream one morning, it just all crumbled and gave way. And I was like, oh, God. 
Uh, I knew I needed some serious bodgery to get it back together. And we did it, and it's done. So more than happy with that. Um, it sits all right. I'm quite impressed with my bodgery that worked. It actually sits quite well. The ride height's quite good. The stance looks good. Um, the body panel fits a bit iffy on the few areas, but we've made the best we can out of a awful kit. It's not a good kit at all. So that's all we can ever do, isn't it? We can always do the best that we possibly can. And I'm happy with the outcome. They're beautiful cars. E31 BMW, A50, A40, whatever. Um, they're lovely cars. And this Calypso Red, it's a stunning colour. really is beautiful. Um, I'm just glad to get it done. I thought for a minute we wouldn't. And, uh, yeah, stubbornness and persistence paid off. And we got it done. So there we go. There's another one off the bench. I think that's number 10 of the year, is I think, which isn't bad going, is it? Because they're all video builds. So, yes, big sigh of relief. We got it done. It could have turned out a lot worse, and I'm more than happy with it. Very, very, uh, very happy we got that one done. So there we are. So what's next? Well, I'm carrying on with the Lancia. That's uh, started decaling that today. I had to stop it to edit this video. Uh, we're going to crack on with that, and then the first of the month uh, of August, we're going to do our entry to the ISM resin group build, and I'm going to be doing that Audi RS4 that I've reviewed recently. Um, so looking forward to doing that one. Very eager to start that one. But I've got a couple of weeks, well, no, I've got about 10 days before then. So I'm going to try and get the Lancia decals, and maybe even some of it 2K'd. Um, it's a big job because it's such a big thing, but we can do it in sections, and that is my plan to do. So there we go. Thankfully, out the way and done, and moving on to pastures. So as always, the boring part. Stick with me though. Uh, <laughs> if you'd like to support these videos, get early access on the videos by two weeks, and uh, get an exclusive Wednesday evening live stream. Now this is going to change. Um, you can become a patron down below. And that way your support and keeping the content going and keeping these videos alive. Because without your support, I couldn't sit here and make these videos for you. We couldn't do the live streams every day. And uh, that's your chance at giving back um, to my time making these videos. Basically, it's down below. There's all different tiers you can choose from, a support level. Um, and it's tier two or higher. We give you two week early access. Uh, and there's lots of other perks of each one. Have a read through, pick one that's applicable. Appreciate everyone who becomes a patron. Um, and appreciate those who have supported me over the last year. I've been doing this now. It's been a year since I've been doing Patreon. It's gone so fast. I thank you all. It means the world. You can also PayPal me and I'll buy me a coffee link down there as well, should you wish to make a one time donation. All goes back into this hobby and keeps me doing this. There's also links to ISM, UMP, Facebook forum. UMPRetail.com, my own personal Paul SM modeling page, the Off Air Hangout group, you can join us off air on a Zoom call. Uh, we've got the group build page, we've got my scale mates, where you can mate me on there, it's called mating on there. Uh, and look at my stash, uh, my influencer stores there, <laughs> with all the products using my videos, and the big long list is there as well. Also, an email, should you wish to email me questions you've got, you can either reply in the comments down below or send me an email. Um, and of course give the video a thumbs up click the bell notification and subscribe and please leave a comment I do love reading all your comments they spur me along I might always reply because I do get quite a few I'll always read them and heart them up always I love all the comments it really does spur me along with the builds and appreciate everyone that's done it so the question what kit have you built it's going to be what's happened today that you've literally put back in the box to never ever think I'm never finishing that. It's terrible. I'm done with it. Never finishing that. And then you carried on and finished it either next day, next week, next month, the extra year, 10 years down the line. What kit have you done that? I'm never going to finish it. And then you brought out the box and finished it. You let me know in the comments down below. And uh, if you got this far, thank you very much for sticking with me. Looking forward to uh, starting a new project. But in the meantime, Plenty of other videos to watch. I've got some reviews to do. And hopefully we'll have another Lancia video up in the forthcoming future. So there we go. Thanks for watching today, everyone. Take care. Enjoy the rest of the evening. Bye-bye.